What is up guys, Little Dog Dog here. Today I'm bringing you the quest Desert Treasure. This is one that's been requested many times. So I decided I'd just say screw it before Menfaust came out and do it. Just in case um, there's any special requirements. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. For uh, just to start this quest, you're going to have to complete um, these quests and the prerequisites to these quests. So you're going to have to have completed the dig site, tourist trap, uh, temple of Ikov, Priest in Peril, Troll Stronghold, and the Waterfall Quest. Now, there are some prerequisites to some of these quests, but if you have completed these quests, then clearly you've completed those prerequisites. All these quests are available on my channel if you haven't done them, so just hop on over to the channel, look them up, and you'll find them. And the skill requirements for this quest, you're going to need 10 Slayer, um, 50 Fire Making, 50 Magic, which is boostable, I think, um, 53 Thieving, uh, higher Thieving is highly recommended, uh, you're going to see there's an item requirement for like up to 200 lockpicks. If you have 53 thieving, it might take you up to 200 lockpicks um, to be able to break into a chest. However, if you have higher thieving, it could take you one. I have level 58 thieving. I think it took me 25 chests at the time of recording or 25 lockpicks to open the chest. You're also going to need 50 mining um, to get ice gloves. If you don't already have ice gloves, um, you can get those during Hero's Quest by just going and fighting the Ice Queen. She drops the Ice Gloves. And I'm also going to recommend that you have a high combat level, like around level 90, um, specifically using magic because all of the bosses in this quest are weak to magic. Uh, if you don't have 90, it's not a big deal. This quest is just going to be a lot more difficult for you. Now for the item requirements as to what you're going to need to complete this quest. These are not uh, recommended items. I'll give you a secondary slide for that. But just for what you need, you're going to need uh, one set of regular ashes, like from burning logs, a blood room, bones, just regular bones, one charcoal, around 2,000 coins. You can get by with 650 coins, but uh, those 2,000 coins are going to make it a lot faster by using uh, flying carpets to get around the desert. You're going to need six molten glass, uh, 12 magic bars. These can be noted, as well as the six steel bars. Those can be noted. A chocolate bar. A chocolate cake will also work too, but the chocolate bar is cheaper. A lock pick, you might only need one. You could need up to 200 if you're very, very unlucky. Like I said earlier with the skill requirements, uh, you're going to need a set of ice gloves, a silver bar, one set of spice, can't be gnome spice, one iron bar, two pairs of climbing boots, one face mask, and one garlic. If you only have the one pair of climbing boots, I'll show you how to get a second pair during the quest. And for what items I would recommend, uh, four energy or super energy potions, around 20 food, um, one set of magic gear. This cannot be uh, Zam uh, Zamorak or Saradoma gear. So uh, I'm just recommending the magic gear. But if you wanted to bring um, any sort of Saradoman sword or something like that with a melee set, it would not be uh, advised as you won't be able to complete the quest. It has to be non Zamorak or Saradoman aligned equipment. Um, you're going to need around two water skins. Well, I'd recommend around two water skins if you just want to tank the the damage in the desert that's fine and you're going to want to run four super restores as there's a boss you have to fight who every f tick it takes you down one uh level in a lot of your combat skills and that can be really tough as well as draining your prayer so the super restores are just for prayer if you, the regular restores will work just fine so if you can't have if you don't have super restores just use restores for your first inventory, you're going to have five different bank stops during this quest. But for your first inventory, you're going to want to have your set of magic combat equipment equipped. If you're using magic, you don't have to, but it makes the quest so much easier. And of course, you're going to want to have your runes in your inventory um, for whatever spell you want to cast. For the first boss, you're going to want to cast a air spell, so just worry about bringing air runes. And then you're going to want to have those six steel bars and 12 magic logs noted. Um, six molten glass, those cannot be noted. One charcoal, one blood room, one ashes, and one bones. A silver bar, a garlic, a spice, and two water skins. You are going to have an opportunity to get more food if you feel like you're going to need more food for the boss fight. Um, when we go to Canifis, so don't worry about that. And uh, a lot of this stuff will be taken on your inventory before you go there. Um, so you fill the rest with food, but make sure you leave two inventory spaces for the beginning of this quest. To start, you're going to talk to the archaeologist right at the Bedabin camp. The fastest way to get here is by taking the flying carpet right by the shanty pass and just traveling to the Bedabin camp. He's right next to the flying carpet. So select talk to our archaeologist when you get there and ask uh, the second chat option, do you have any quests? Continue to click through the chat options. Accept the quest when the uh, quest thing pops up. If you want, you can look at the required items as well as the rewards. 
and then click accept quest. Now, as long as you had open inventory spaces, you're going to have gotten a scroll to take to the dig site. Now, you can find the dig site exam center here. If you have um, the dig site teleport um, from a clue scroll, go ahead and use that. Or otherwise, you're going to have the home teleport to Varrock. And uh, go ahead and walk there. From the lodestone, you're going to want to go east. Once you get to the wall on the eastern side, go north. And then there's going to be a gate in the fence to your east where you can get to the dig site. Located right next to the museum guard. Now once you go through that gate, you're going to want to head south. Then east again and you'll see the exam center. Talk to the archaeological expert. If it asks you to replace your codex ultimatus, just say no. And then choose the first chat option and ask about the desert treasure quest. Your character will ask if they're Terry Baldino and he's going to know the archaeologist that you're helping out in the Bedabin camp. So just continue to click through the chat options. He'll translate it for you. And then um, you're going to have to click on him again after this dialogue closes to be able to get that uh, translation back. So once again, don't replace your Codex Ultimatus and then choose the first chat option, ask about Desert Treasure. And then he's going to give you the translated book. Now you just need to head back to the archaeologist at the Bedouin camp. If you had a Pollen of Nietzsche teleport, could be faster to use that. However, um, you can just home teleport to Alcarid and take the flying carpet. If you're unaware of what the flying carpet is, I'll show you here. So right next to the shanty pass, you can right click on the rug merchant, select travel, and then choose the second chat option. I want to travel to the Bedbin camp. It costs 200 gold, but if you brought the 2000 gold, at least you'll have enough. Now this is going to take you to the Bedouin camp and it's going to place you right next to the archaeologist. He talked to the archaeologist and he's going to ask if you read the book. Um, this is going to bring up one of two chat options. The first option says read book. This just lets you read the book and then you're going to have to talk to him again and select the ch second chat option. Don't read book to progress through the quest. If you say don't read book, he'll, the character will say, yeah, I did actually read it. It was boring. So talk to him again after he reads it. And he's going to ask for your help finding treasure because that's what he is. He's a treasure hunter and not actually an archaeologist. So your character haggles a little bit. And after talking about the deal, you're going to get an option to help him. So when that comes up, choose the first chat option and help him. Um, he'll tell you that from here you're going to want to head to the Bandit camp to the south to find out what you can and he'll continue to look around at the Bedouin camp. So this is where it's important that you don't have any Zami or Sarah Doman gear. Um, so you're going to want to go to the bar in the Bandit camp. When you are in the bar you're going to want to talk to the bartender behind the bar in blue. Trade him, and you're going to buy a bandit brew for 650 coins. So choose the first chat option, buy a beer, drink the beer, and then talk to the bartender again. When the chat option comes up, choose the second chat option. I heard about four diamonds. And he's going to have heard about them and tell you you should speak to a village elder. Now you need to speak to Eblis, who can be located in or around this building here. You can see he's around the building for me just to the uh, south. So when you speak to Eblis, just talk to him. Click through the dialogue options. And when the option comes up, choose the fourth option. Tell me of the four diamonds of Zandra. Because you're trying to help free his town and resurrect Zandra, he's going to be able to help you. And he wants to make scrying orbs for you. So um, to do that, he needs the ashes, the blood rune, the bones, the charcoal, um, your noted items, and your six molten glass. So choose the first chat option, yes. 
when um, it comes up. He'll tell you all those items that you need that I just told you. And then all you have to do after um, ending this dialogue is use those items on him. So once again, choose the first chat option. Yes, I will go get, go get those for you. And then use those items on him. It does not matter what order you use them in, as long as you make sure you use every item on him. Also make sure you don't um, bury the bones on accident. That's very easy to do. Once you've used all the items on him, talk to him again. He's going to say he'll find a suitable spot um, to make the scrying orbs, and it ends up being just around the lodestone to the southeast of the bandit camp. So you're going to want to run to the lodestone, and you'll see all the mirrors set up. Talk to Eblis, and he's going to tell you that these orbs cannot pinpoint where the diamonds are, but they can give you a general idea. So, uh, being that this is a guide, you're just going to want to head to Canifis and go to the Hair of the Dog Inn. As soon as you walk into the bar, it should trigger a cutscene. If it doesn't, just talk to the bartender, Rovar. It'll trigger a cutscene between him and Malak. Malak is trying to get a blood teeth from Rovar because... Um, in a previous quest you did, you um, took care of Gitterinx, their um, buddy, who would normally go get the blood teeth. So talk to Malak after the cutscene is over, and choose the fifth chat option, I am looking for a special diamond. He's going to tell you he knows where the diamond in is, and he's willing to help you. Now what he needs you to do is kill a vampire for him who is an old ancient. So um, he asks if that's a deal. Choose the first chat option. Yes. Say it's a deal. And then make sure you do this. Choose the second chat option. Where can I find DeSeuss? Click through the chat options. And then you're going to choose. Um, once that's done, you're going to choose the second chat option again. Um, how can I kill DeSeuss? If you do not choose these options, you will not be able to progress in the quest after this. Because he won't be able to use that silver bar to make a pot. He just tells you what to do once you have the pot made. So just say, I don't need anything. And then you're going to head to Drainer Village to go into the sewers. Those are located right next to the jail, as you can see here. So just home teleport to Drainer. And just south of the lodestone, you can find those sewers. Open the trap door and climb down. And in the sewers, you're going to find the uh, other vampire that's going to help you. Just talk to him, and uh, he'll make the silver pot for you. And then you're going to have to head to Entrana. Don't worry, there's going to be time to bank, so you're going to have to ditch your combat equipment. So just home teleport to Port Salem, and there's going to be a bank deposit box um, on the docks right before you travel to Entrana. Open the deposit back box and just get rid of all the combat equipment you have on you and then right click on one of the monks to travel to Entrana. Now you need to take this pot to the head monk, the high priest, use the pot on him or just talk to him. He's going to bless the pot for you and now you can head back to Canifis. Now that you have the blessed pot. Head back to the bank. Make sure you get out your uh, magic armor. And then you're going to talk to Malak once more. He's going to take your blood and use it to fill the pot. And then right click on your garlic to crush it. Use the garlic powder on the blessed pot. And then use the spice on the pot also. Now this is the part where you have to go find DeSeuss. So DeSeuss is located in the graveyard. Just in the bottom right corner of your screen right now. 
Um, there are two possible routes to get there. One is going through the um, trap door in the back of the uh, bar. This might be a little faster if you've completed um, an aid of the Meyer Q. Um, or you can go through the swamp on the right. Either way, you have to cross that wooden bridge you made in search of the Meyer Q. So you can, as you can see, I'm going through here. I have to climb over that wooden bridge to be able to get to um, DeSeuss. Now he's weak to air spells, so as long as you have air runes, like you would for casting any spell, um, you're going to be good. As you can see, I did not actually bring magic gear. I thought a little highly of myself, more highly than I should have. But just use your blessed pot once you have it all taken care of on the vampire tomb. Wait a second, and then DeSeuss is going to spawn and attack you. Now, prayers are tricky here. It, you'll have to be prayer switching as if you have a ranged... A prayer on for magic or ranged he's gonna attack with melee if you have a melee prayer on he's gonna attack with uh, ranged or magic so you have to kind of prayer switch it can be difficult if you're not good at it don't worry about it as it's just gonna distract you more and you won't be able to do as much damage now this is the only fight I've sped up um, past normal speed because of uh, I was using range and not magic but once you've killed him, just head back to Canifus. Go back into the inn and talk to Malak. Your character will get the diamond from him. And now you're going to want to make sure you go to the bank with that diamond or else you'll be attacked by a stranger after a while who's trying to take the diamond from you. Now, for your second inventory, you're going to need your set of combat, magic combat equipment. Um, I'm going to recommend you use fire spells for this next boss, so make sure you have fire runes as well as your air runes for casting the spell. Two pairs of climbing boots, um, one equipped and one in your inventory. Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you only have um, one pair, I have to pick up a second pair during this quest myself, so you can just follow me and do the same thing. You're going to need an iron bar, a chocolate bar, around two super energies, and two restore or super restores. Um... The run energies is because the ice drains your energy, and the restores are because the ice also drains your attack skills. And they're going to fill the rest of your inventory with food, but leave about three open inventory spaces for any items you might want to pick up during the quest, as well as the quest required items. Now you're going to head to Dunstan, who is, is in northeast Berthorp. So just hold teleport to Berthorp. And he's going to be outside his house um, working at an anvil. So talk to him. And when it pops up, choose the first chat option. Can you put some spikes on my climbing boots? This is as long as you have the iron bar. He'll spike your climbing boots. Say yes, but I still want them. And you'll have a pair of spiked boots now. Say nothing, thanks. And then you're going to head into um, Death Plateau. Now if you only had the one pair of climbing boots like I did. And you have to go get a second. Um... You can do that. Just follow along with me here. If not, skip ahead like 15 seconds. Um, and you'll be past me buying climbing boots. So if you talk to Frida and choose the first chat option, can I buy some climbing boots? And then choose the first chat option again. Buy standard boots for 12 GP as you don't need the 75,000 uh, coin climbing boots. And then if you know this area, this is just... Uh, west of the God Wars dungeon. If you have the Edgar's Ruse completed, you can use the Ed Edgar's Ruse teleport. Save a lot of time. Um, but if you don't, just because it's not a requirement for this quest, I'm showing you the path to get there. This is just going through Death Plateau. You're going to climb up this cliffside right here. Make sure you have climbing boots equipped. Climb over the uh, the rocks. And you're going to follow the path like you would um, when you completed Death Plateau the first time. Now you're going to want to follow the bottom path around. 
If you have prayer points, make sure you turn on protect from range as these trolls can deal a little bit of damage. And follow this path here to the northwest up. You're going to get to an ice gate with a baby troll. And when you get there, talk to the troll child. Use your chocolate bar on him. Make sure you don't eat it. And then talk to him one more time after giving him the chocolate bar. Just click through the dialogue. He's going to tell you about the diamond that he found. Say that if you free his parents, um, he'll give you the diamond. He'll ask if that's a fair deal. Choose the first chat option yes when it comes up. And then you have to click go through ice gate twice. Now run over to the southwestern side, southeastern side, my apologies. And you're going to have to kill about five trolls until those stalactites covering the cave entrance right there all fall off. You can see that each fall off every time you kill a troll. And once the last one has fallen, you can get through. Now, you'll have noticed your stats are being drained. Uh, don't worry about your stats being drained. Just make sure you keep your uh, health up uh, as well as your run energy if you brought super restores. These wolves are going to attack you. Just make sure you keep your health up because this is only for a short time. And then once you get into this clearing here with the rocks, the wolves will stop attacking you and the boss will show up. Now you're going to want to use your super restore to restore your prayer points and your skills or just restore um, to restore your skills and attack the boss Camille. You can see I didn't speed this uh, fight up very much. It is much faster using magic than uh, any other skill such as ranged or melee. When he dies, he's going to drop two chocolate cakes and a super store. Might want to pick that up. And then you're going to want to follow the path to go free um, his parents. You're going to get to an ice path. Just go to the northern side. And there's going to be a path to start on uh, the northwestern side. Make sure you put on your spiked boots. And then use the ice ledge and you'll be on the path. Now there are no specific uh, agility shortcuts you have to cross, but the whole thing is just an agility shortcut. So you'll gain agility experience just for being on it. If you fall, uh, your character will get back up. I don't know if he falls off as it did not happen to me, but I'm sure it's possible. You're going to have to go through the ice gate at the top once more, just like you did um, with the first two. Cross the long bridge here. And then right click on the ice blocks and select smash ice. Once you're done, you'll talk to the troll father and troll mother and they're going to teleport you back to the troll child. He'll give you the uh, ice diamond. And now we're going to head back to the bank to get our third inventory. For your third inventory, you're going to want your set of combat uh, equipment, preferably magic. Uh, I believe this boss, this next boss, is weak to water. Yeah, this, this next boss is weak to water. Make sure you have your face mask and your ice gloves equipped. You're going to want about one water skin as this takes place in the desert, although it's not mandatory. 
uh, one energy potion, and you're going to want to fill the rest of your, <coughs> of your inventory with food. And go ahead and just fill it right to the brim. You really don't need to pick anything up unless a monster drops something you like. So head to Polnivnich, and you're going to go into the smoke dungeon located just to the west. So Elkar Elkar teleport to um, the flying carpets are typically the fastest way if you don't have a special teleport like from a clue scroll. Travel with the rug merchant and choose the third chat option. I want to travel to North Pond of Nietzsche. From where the rug lands, you're just going to want to walk south. Through the city. And then head west. You'll see the well here. It'll be called a smoking well. Select climb down. As long as your face mask on, just climb down again. And you'll find yourself in this dungeon. This is the smoke dungeon where it says two pound of niche. That is going to be where you are located right now. Um, you have to worry about the Farid, the burnt chest, and the standing torches. Those are all the triangular and um, square items on the map. In each corner is a torch you're going to need to light before you can get to the burnt chest. This is going to give you a warm key which you can use to unlock uh, the room which Farid is in. So you can kind of see what path you're going to have to take. I start with the southwestern corner. So just light the standing torches. And then I go to the northwestern corner. Light the standing torch there. If you don't do this within five minutes, um, the torches will start to go out and you won't be able to get the uh, a burnt chest open. They all four have to be lit at the same time. Then from here, I went and lit the southeast torch. And then the Northeast Torch. Once you have all four lit, you want to head back towards um, the entrance to the dungeon where the burnt chest was located. You have plenty of time to do this, but if for some reason um, you one of the torches go out, you just have to go light them all once again as they'll all start to go out. So open the burnt chest, you'll get your warm key, and at this point it doesn't matter if torches start to go out, um, you've got the key. You're good. When you get here, you're going to open the gate. Use the key on the gate to open it. You'll go in, and Freed will spawn. He's just like every other boss. You can just hit him with spells, and he's going to die. When he dies, your character will automatically pick up the uh, smoke diamond. And now you can just home teleport out. Go to any bank. And we're going to pick up our fourth inventory for the final diamond.
Now you're going to want to get your fourth inventory. This final boss is weak to earth spells, so you're going to want to make sure you bring your earth runes to cast those earth spells. You're going to need at least one lockpick, but bring all the lockpicks that you stockpiled for this quest um, in noted form. You're going to need to sell those to the general store once yours break. You're going to need one anti-poison um, because the chest can poison you. It's not necessary though, and you're going to want to leave at least five open inventory spaces and fill the rest of your inventory with food. Once you've got everything you need in your inventory, you're going to head to Ardoin and uh, go to this location. This is just west of the fishing guild. So home teleport to Ardoin. And from the lodestone, head northwest. Just around this little fenced in area here. You need to speak to the man walking around. Rosolo, and choose the third chat option to ask about the diamonds of Azandra. He knows of the shadow diamond, the final diamond you need to find. But he needs something in return for you to be able to find it. Now in the bandit camp, um, they have stolen his gilded cross. It's a very wealthy item, and they stole it, and you can find it in the bandit camp. He asks if that's a deal. You're going to choose the first chat option and select yes. Now you're going to want to head to the bandit camp. Once again, make sure you don't have any Ceridomen or Zamorak items, as you'll just be attacked, and it won't work. Go through the Shanty Pass, travel with the Rug Merchant, and you're going to travel to the Bedabin Camp. So choose the second chat option, I want to travel to the Bedabin Camp. Now, you're just going to go south and head to the bandit camp. Trade the general store merchant right in the center of the store, or right in the center of the town. He's located right here. Go to sell items and sell him about five of your lock picks or however much it's going to make a full inventory for you. Minus one. Make sure you don't have a full inventory because you need to get the item. And then go to buy items, buy back your lock picks, and go into the southernmost tent. Now there's going to be a secure chest here. Choose the first chat option, yes. Now every time you want to open it, you have to choose that first chat option. There are three locks your character has to unlock. Depends on your thieving level, how easy it is. But I finally got it. I got the Gilded Cross. And now I can head back to Ardoin to speak to Rosolo. So speak to Rizzolo, he'll ask if you got the Gilded Cross, and you're going to get your Ring of Visibility. Now equip the Ring of Visibility, very important, and then you're going to head into that fenced in area just to your east, and as long as you have the Ring of Visibility equipped, you'll be able to see the ladder to the Smoke Dungeon. Now, uh, I'm sorry, the Shadow Dungeon. Okay, so the Shadow Dungeon, you can see here the correct path you have to follow is uh, highlighted in yellow, and you need to make it to that big room all the way on the eastern side. If you want a safe spot the boss, there's a safe spot in the northeastern corner. However, I don't recommend it as it can actually cause some bugs with the quest, so you're just going to have to kind of tank him. Uh, the correct path is fairly easy to get as long as you follow this map. Um, if you get lost, just kind of retrace your steps. But it's really, you're just kind of going uh, east until you can anymore. Follow that. 
and then follow that same wall uh, all the way south. Go east from there. And then at the first intersection, you're gonna go north. And then at the next intersection, go east. And you'll be in the big room. He won't spawn for a second, and then he'll spawn behind you. Now he's weak to earth spells, uh, as I said. And he also, you have to kill him twice. It's when you kill him once, he just respawns stronger. However, when he does die for the second time, he will be dead for good. Make sure that you pick up the diamond because he's the only one who drops it on the floor. It won't automatically go in your inventory. I can't stress enough that you have to pick up the diamond. So pick up the shadow diamond. Once you're out of combat, you're going to home teleport um, to whatever bank you want. Once you go to the bank, your inventory, uh, for your final inventory, you're going to want your set of magic armor, as all the characters in this quest are weak to magic. doesn't matter what spells you're casting at this point, because they're all different. Your smoke diamond, your shadow diamond, your blood diamond, and your ice diamond, and bring around five food. Don't bring any more than that, unless you really think you're going to need it, um, because it weighs you down and actually makes it harder to get through the pyramid for the next part. So you're going to want to head back to Eblis, who's located at the Bandit Camp Lone Stone. Once again, we're going to be taking the flying carpets, so go to Al Karad. This isn't sped up at all, by the way. This is just RuneScape making me run fast after I got off the Lone Stone. Once again, travel with the Rug Merchant and select the second chat option. I want to travel to the Bedabin Camp. And from here, you're going to run all the way south, um, back to the Bandit Camp Load Zone, where he has these scrying orbs set up. Speak to Emblis once more. And your character will tell him you got the four diamonds of Azandra. And uh, you can free Azandra by going into the pyramid and using the diamonds on the correct podiums and talking to Azandra in the pyramid. So you need to use a certain diamond on a certain obelisk. So on the northwestern obelisk, you're going to use the blood diamond. On the southwestern obelisk, you're going to use the shadow diamond. On the southeast obelisk, you're going to use the ice diamond. And on the northeast obelisk, you're going to use the smoke diamond. Once you've got all four diamonds put in place, you're going to go up the pyramid and down um, the ladder. You're going to be on the first floor. Now, the correct path is highlighted in a grayish white color here. I just took these off the wiki, so don't yell at me. Um, and you just need to follow that path to get through the next floor. Traps are very rare, really, in the pyramid. Um, just kind of mouse around if you see any. You can see I'm wiggling my mouse around to see if anything comes up. And... Uh, the only traps I ran into were scarabs and mummies spawning. Now for the second floor, you're going to be in the middle of the room and you have to go east, south, west, and then north to the ladder that it would just be above you. You can see I had some scarabs spawn here. They slow you down and stop you when they do spawn. You have to wait for their animation to finish before you can continue walking. So don't think that you glitched or something. It just happens that way. And then climb down the ladder. 
and now it is time for the third floor. Now you're going to be in the northern part of the floor once more. Um, so you're gonna go uh, a little south and then west, south once more, uh, all the way to the east, and then follow the south wall until you get to the room with the ladder. Make sure you're keeping an eye out for traps as I didn't trigger any, I can't tell you where they are. Climb down the ladder once you get in the room. And now you're on the fourth and final floor. You're going to be in the southern part of the uh, maze here. And like you can see, you're going to go west, north, west, north, east. Follow that wall all the way around so you get to the north wall. Follow it all the way to the east. And then just follow that same path all the way until you get to the room with Zandra in it. Open the door once you get to the room with Azandra. Talk to Azandra, and she's not going to realize that the battle's over, and it's been many years since she's been trapped in the pyramid. She's going to teach you the magics of her time, which allows you access to the uh, spellbook with Barrage and all that, and then that's going to be quest complete. If this helped you, be sure to leave a like, comment down below if you have any questions, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you're bored, check out some other stuff. I do boss guides, quest guides, event guides, and whatever I feel like doing, you know, I got other stuff on the way. Thanks.